Hello and welcome to the Car Kernel channel and welcome to the 2023 Lexus RX. In today's video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know about this model from its technical specifications across all the trims through inside all the updates that happens and things you don't normally see in other car reviews. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's start with the technical review under the hood. So the Lexus RX, the 2023 model, has four possible configurations. The first one is the Lexus RX 350, like this one that we're going to look at today. The second one is the RX 350H, which is the hybrid model. And then the other one is the RX 450H Plus, which is the plug-in model, basically the same as the hybrid, just the plug-in part added. And then the hot one, the performance one, the RX 500H. Now in the RX 350 and in the RX 500H, you will find the T24A FTS engine, which is an all new engine that rolled out in the RX and in the Highlander and in the NX model as well. This engine is what we're gonna really be focusing on a lot since we have it in front of us because the hybrid model and even the plug-in hybrid model actually does not have a new engine. That model has the A25A FXS 2.5 liter engine, which is basically found in a lot of Toyota Lexus models, it goes back all the way to 2018. This engine is a turbocharged engine and there's a lot of debate about this engine's existence in the RX, which we're gonna address in this video later on. But for now, let's talk about its technical specifications. This is a four cylinder, 2.4 liter, turbocharged dual injection engine. So this has Toyota's D4S, it has port injection, and at the same time, it has direct injection. For all intents and purposes, and just for you to draw a conclusion on this engine from the beginning, this is a sister or brother engine to the A25, shares a lot of its technology and they're basically co-developed together. But this one has been basically a modified version of that for the turbo with a lot of changes. Some of them new stuff, some of them actually kind of a reverse to the old school. Let's dive in and you'll see what I mean. The first thing that is kind of a roll back to the old school style, the A25A does not have a mechanical water pump and the hybrid and the not hybrid variant. This, however, the 2.4 liter turbo does have a mechanical water pump, even in the RX 500H. Belt driven, tensioner, things are very basic, old school. There you go, you just have a mechanical good old water pump, no electronic water pump or nothing for the engine. And the valve cover on this engine is made out of plastic. Many people will find that an issue, but from experience and from factual data. There hasn't been issues with these yet. They've only been out for a few years here, but there's something unique about this valve cover. See, most Toyota valve covers, they're just a few bolts and they come out. Then we came out with direct injection. You have the high pressure fuel pump that has to be removed that sits on top of the valve cover. But this valve cover is kind of unique to Toyota land. There hasn't really been engines like this in the past. This is the first. The direct injectors, usually in Toyota land, if it's a V6 or a V8, they sit right in the valley, or if it's a four cylinder, they sit on the side. In this one, they actually sit at the top, right next to the spark plugs. So if you remove this valve cover, you have to pull out all the injectors. This adds kind of complication for service. However, it actually is a better place for them. Buried underneath the intake manifold is not a good place for these direct injectors. On top is a better place, cooler, they have more airflow, more cooling, and they're e more easily accessible. This engine, of course, is a timing chain engine. It has two chains, very similar to the A25A. One big chain that connects the cams to the crankshaft, and one smaller chain at the bottom that connects the crank to the oil pump. So the oil pump is no longer part of the front timing cover like we've seen with Toyota engines in the past, but this one has a separate oil pump, which is a variable displacement oil pump, which 
can vary the oil pressure based, it's computer controlled, it has a solenoid, it can vary the oil pressure based on RPM and various factors. This engine also has dual VVTi. Of course, this is a very modern engine. However, there is a little bit of a change from the A25 here, which kind of goes back to the old school stuff. This engine has oil controlled VVTIs on both sides. See, the A25A has an electric motor that controls the VVTI on the intake, motor speeds up, the timing advances, motor slows down, the timing retards. And this one, you have just old school oil controls. There are two solenoids, very accessible. You pull them out, they're piezo solenoids that just push the oil control valve, which is part of the bolt that holds the VVTI gear. And that's that. It's very basic, very simple, super simple to service and relatively problem free, which is good. This engine having direct injection at some times when it's not running on port, it does have a vacuum pump. And that vacuum pump is very, very important in this engine, as you'll find out in a little bit when we talk about the turbocharger. Something else that we probably mentioned, but let's go over it. This engine does have a drive belt, even if in its hybrid configuration. I thought that we were done with, with drive belts with hybrids, but here's the RX500H with a drive belt to drive that mechanical water pump. Interesting choice there. I actually prefer the electric water pumps. They are pretty reliable, no belt, no tension or none of that, but the RX500H does have it. The other thing that is interesting here is the engine cover. For the longest time, engine covers were just there to insulate noise and kind of makes things look more pretty. Some people refer to it as a beauty cover. But here, this engine cover is actually serves a very important function. If you look at it, you notice there's this baffle in the front and then the engine cover has like a shape, a very specific shape to channel air as it comes from underneath the car, goes up, gets channeled, pushes the heat out of the turbos down and out. This is a very interesting cover. Usually the Germans love to funk, purpose their covers for other things. And here we are in a Lexus. Finally, the cover is purposed for an actual use other than just keeping the noise down, making things look pretty, which I think is pretty cool. Because with, with turbocharged engines, you really want to keep the heat levels down because you have basically an extra heat generator under the hood, which can get things pretty hot. Speaking of the heat generator, the turbocharger. This is probably the biggest thing that people are, are, some people are happy with, some people are not, mostly not. Let's talk about the turbocharger. Believe it or not, there is typical Toyota and Lexus conservativeness when it comes to this turbo because it is a small turbo and it is, take a deep breath, vacuum controlled. This is Toyota at its finest. Why would you change something that works and overcomplicate it, then it has problems? We've seen that done by Toyota before and they didn't go very well. This turbocharged wastegate is actually vacuum controlled. That's why the vacuum pump is very important here. In the past, we used to have vacuum controlled wastegates. There has really never been a problem with them because vacuum is reliable. You apply it, it opens the wastegate, you take it off, it shuts it off, and life is good. There was really no need for the complication of an electronic wastegate. It's just one more thing that's gonna break with heat, and they realize that, and here we are with a vacuum control turbocharger. That is coolant cooled and oil cooled as well. Now, with every turbocharged engine, there has to be an intercooler, and here, things flip. You have an old school turbocharger and kind of a very modern intercooler system. This intercooler is liquid cooled. So it uses coolant to cool the charge and send it back into the engine, which is pretty cool because you, then you don't have all this piping going all over and this extra radiator in the front. You don't have all that. The, the more piping you have for the turbo, inlet and outlet, the more chances you're gonna have leaks and the more chances things will just go south usually. So here we have a liquid cooled intercooler that has a separate coolant circuit from the engine. It has another radiator in the front just for that coolant, an electric water pump and a second reservoir and life is good. It's actually a very good system. Some people will have reservations about that. This is a good combination, an old school turbo wastegate with a modern intercooler. 
That's a very good touch there. Now this engine has stop-start technology. So every time you stop at a traffic light in the RX350, the engine shuts off to preserve fuel and whatnot. That's everybody dislikes that. But of course, this has a planetary gear starter to start the engine very quickly. Nothing really new or exclusive. The transmission also has a electric oil pump so it would keep pressure so when you make the start stop event when you take off you didn't lose your transmission pressure and you would be already in gear that's standard operation there's nothing exclusive there to this one but nonetheless it does have it which is something starting to be new four cylinder with start stop technology is a bit much because it really vibrates when it starts so perhaps uh, utilize that turn off button for this feature very quickly when you get in the car. Then let's talk about the transmission options, which there are a grand total of three or four, depends how you look at it. So the RX350, there is an eight-speed transmission, UA series. This transmission has basically been around for a while, since 2017 and earlier in the Lexus RX. This transmission has one thing that is not good. It has too many gears. So it loves to hunt for gears and go all over. It does have a plastic oil pan that sits right in the front. And this has been slightly modified for this Lexus, this specific model. And then the hybrid models and the plug-in, they have a P810, which is not new. This is actually the same transmission as the RAV4 Prime. It is a very good eCVT. Many people will cringe when you hear the word CVT, but remember, this is an eCVT. It's actually a very good transmission, nothing new. Even that entire 350H powertrain, even the 450H plus powertrain, is nothing new. They've been around for a while, so nothing new and exciting there. And then the 500H. The RX 500H has a unique new transmission, the PC60. We're not going to get too much into that. We're going to wait to get an actual RX 500H to talk about that. But in an essence, that is a completely different hybrid system that uses one motor, kind of similar to the Tundra. And that is a six-speed transmission. Very cool, unique transmission. We'll talk about that when we get one. But let's continue on the eight-speed transmission. The eight-speed transmission has too many gears, and it loves to kind of upshift, downshift, and had a weird pattern, but as time passes, it's a very adaptive transmission, so it will adapt to the way you drive as you go. If you have multiple drivers, unfortunately, you're gonna continue to have this up, down, shift, abnormal shifting. The other thing that it was kind of a modification to the eight speed that happened here, this transmission was originally designed for a cable shifter, basically a mechanical shifter, you shift into drive, cable pulls the arm and it shifts. But in this, we have an electronic shifter, so they had to do a little bit of modification. So on top of the transmission, right where the cable goes, they just put a big actuator that mimics what the cable used to do, and it just turns the transmission shaft, and that's how you achieve the shifts. Let's talk about the all-wheel drive models and what they have. So in the hybrid models, you have a Q610 rear transmission unit or rear hybrid drive. Nothing really is new there. It is a standard hybrid rear transmission. It just has a motor, it drives the rear axle, and that's about it. In the RX 500H though, there is a unique new unit that contains a separate inverter because that does so much more and it's a bigger unit and it's more meant for performance than really just for all wheel drive. So that is a completely different unit. Again, we'll get more into it when we get an RX 500H. But in the non-hybrid model, like this one, the RX 350, there is a surprise and a good one. This does not have torque vectoring. We saw the torque vectoring kind of enter into the Highlander market and the RAV4, but I don't see it here. This has an ancient mechanical all-wheel drive. Works great, trouble-free, no drama, no complicated electronics, and none of that. It's just basic, honest to God, works very good. Look underneath the 2023 Lexus RX350. You notice, of course, things are all covered up, and this is to be expected. There's a small opening here for lifting. This is actually the subframe. This is a TNGA platform, so there's a full boxed 
subframe in the front, which is a pretty cool design. Simple few bolt opening for the oil and oil filter. Very simple service here. Everything is nice and covered and stays clean. Looking at the front suspension, very familiar design. Control arm with a separate ball joint that separates with the two nuts and the one bolt. Brilliant design. I wish every car has this. Two piston caliper on the front brakes. Aluminum knuckle, which is interesting. I'm trying to save some weight here. And then we look here, McPherson struts. Very simple design. On this side, you have a little dampener on the strut. Pretty nice to see that, that they still do that. This actually dampens the vibration from the McPherson strut as it goes up and down. Pretty cool design. Going back, you notice the exhaust takes kind of a detour to the side a little bit, not as much as some of the hybrid models that we've seen. And that's because the fuel tanks actually in this area. So everything is really well covered up here. I really like it. From over here, this is the opening where we talked about the engine cover. This is the opening where the air will actually come out. It's a pretty decent opening. You can barely see the turbo up there. The nice thing is the catalytic converter is actually right by the turbo and that's it. There is no other catalytic converters. This is actually a resonator, not a catalytic converter. So uh, I guess theft is not an issue here. As we make our way back, there is somewhat of a unique suspension here and it's pretty, there's a few interesting things. This arm design is different than the previous RX and actually the Highlander as well. This interesting thing is the sway bar is aluminum and it has a very interesting shape. It's a pretty cool shape that it has here. Other than that, this is an all-wheel drive model like we talked about. This has an ancient system. If you come look at it here, rear differential. This is basically standard rear differential for many Toyota and Lexus models. The transfer case is mechanical. It's always spinning the rear drive shaft. And then you have a coupler unit right here. This coupling unit engages or disengages all-wheel drive. So that's the simplicity of this system. It's a tried and true system, works really good. Doesn't really have many issues. Now in the back brakes, you got single piston caliper. You do have the electronic parking brake actuator right on it. I actually like those because they work really well and they don't have issues simpler, no less mechanical stuff that is rusting and falling apart as this car ages. Another thing that is interesting, you notice this unique arm. It's actually a pretty cool shaped arm. So this arm ends in a tie rod style or a joint. And the reason for that is in some models, specifically the RX 500H, there is an option for rear steering. I don't know why we need rear steering in an RX, but somebody at Lexus decided we should have one. So basically there would be a rack that sits here, an electronic rack that sits here and connects to these two points. And that's what turns the rear wheels. Pretty simple design and something, not, nothing new to the automotive business. This is something super old, super old cars used to have that. And now that we're starting to see it again, make a comeback. Many cars are having rear steering, but that's how that would be mounted. Pretty simple, possibly a different subframe where the rack would mount, because I see this welded here, or this pocket where this arm sits. But that's really about it. This pocket wouldn't be here. We, there, we would have the mount for the rack in the rear. Moving to the exhaust, big muffler right here with two tips, and the tips are actually hidden. Potentially in the sportier models, you'll have a tip that is more exposed, but this one is pretty hidden. Life is good. There is one thing about that Lexus kind of made an emphasis on. In the aerodynamics of the body, this tiny little fin that you see right here actually does a lot for aerodynamic. So this deflects the air from going inside the bumper or kind of just going down and this actually flips it back out and it helps with aerodynamics. Had to mention that because whoever designed this probably spent a lot of time doing this. So there is that fin in case you haven't seen it because when the car is down, you won't see it. There is that. Take a look at the outside of the Lexus RX in 2023. The first thing is the spindle grill. It's a lot less 
a lot more subtle, less in your face, kind of better integrated into everything. Doesn't look like just a last minute add-on. The one thing that is odd, because of that, we have this slouch feel here. There's just the front comes in and all of a sudden makes a very sudden turn, which is kind of an interesting design. Something that is pretty cool. In cold climate cars, the radar sensor usually gets clogged with snow and ice, and that's that for the safety systems. In the cold climate packages, there is an option for a heater here, which is pretty cool. It's really unclear if the cold packages are meant for the US or not, but nonetheless, some of you out there in the world will get that option. I hope it is available everywhere, so it would be, because in Chicagoland, this is a problem, but that is how they went with it. Headlights are very sleek, very RX-like, nothing over the top. It has the big Lexus L and looks pretty cool. I actually like the front of this car overall. I, I think it is subtle, it is classy, it is kind of a nice car face. I don't know if you describe cars with faces, but I describe this as a nice face for a car. Moving over to the side, we have this design that now we're seeing in a lot of manufacturers, this kind of two turns and then another turn. This gives it the indication that from far away that the car is wider than it is, but then it's actually flat down the side. It's a pretty cool design, kind of, kind of a design element. The flare arches are body color, which is nice. The bottom is not, the bottom of the doors. And then this is a 21 inch wheel. Pretty massive wheel for this car. And I'm glad that it does not affect the way it rides. It's not harsh over bumps. So they designed this wheel in mind when they designed the suspension. So that is cool. They, they didn't just put a bigger wheel to make it look cool and then it's harsh over bumps. It's not, that is nice. Looking at the side, and this is something interesting that they did. When, if you've owned previous RXs or looked at them, when you look at this side, the car looks smaller. It almost looks smaller. It's of course an optical illusion because actually the car is shorter, but the wheelbase is bigger. So they took a little bit from the overhang and put it in the middle. That works, makes the interior bigger and the car slightly smaller on the overhang. Going over the here, this area, this is a classic RX kind of side profile or shape. We've seen this in a lot of RXs. This, you cannot mistake this for anything but an RX. I think it is pretty cool to see that side profile of the RX to be similar. We go in the back, and this is where there are a few things I like, a few things I don't like. First thing is, I really like these taillights. And I, what I like more about the taillights is the Lexus written out, not a logo. This just looks so classy, so nice. It is a full lit bar light, not just the sides and the rest is just fake. No, this entire thing lights up. Looks very cool, looks very classic and elegant. It just doesn't look too much in your face. It just has a, an elegant look. What I don't like is, and this is something that's becoming a trend with a lot of Toyota models, and actually other manufacturers as well. There is no bumper. Anything you hit this car in the back or something, you back into something, you destroy the back door. Look at this. There's literally no bumper, nothing. So that's the designs they're going with these days. And that's really the downside of it. You back into something, usually in the past, you know, you hit the bumper, not a big deal, you know, you can fix it. But now if you hit it, you're gonna hit the back door. Potentially it won't open anymore, and now we have bigger issues. That's the design everybody's going with. Overall, this car looks really nice, looks very classy. I think the back looks better than the front. The front just have that slouch look. If they take care of that, it would look as good as the back. Something that is interesting about this, so this has Lexus's e-latch system. So these door handles are actually fixed. They don't move, you just push a little button in the back and it opens. Equally on the inside, you have another button, you push it, and you push the door and it opens. In case of an emergency, if you battery dies, lock, door is locked and you can't open it no more, you can actually pop this cover and use the key to open it. And if you're inside the car, you can actually pull this entire handle up and then it unlocks the door. 
This is very standard. But then there is another thing that is added to this. Except the driver's door, all these doors, they do have a child lock. But in addition to that, if you look right here, this is very difficult to see. Right here, there's a little door where you can push it and manually disable the system. I don't know why we need to do that, but we do have another override, just in case. That's the e-latch system, which is pretty interesting. One more thing about the exterior that is interesting. If we open the hood, and we take a look, this is, of course, gas shock hood, nothing ex exclusive there. But this has not one hood latch, not two, it has three, technically two and a half. So there is two hood latches with this massive spring. And then the third latch is just the safety release once you pop the hood so you can open it. I don't know why Lexus is going with this design. I mean, look here, you have three strikers. I don't know what's the point. Supposedly, it is because we have an aluminum hood. If you just put one latch, and you notice this in the Toyota side, the aluminum hood starts shaking when you're driving on the highway at higher speeds. You see them physically shaking. So in the Lexus, I mean, you can't have a shaking hood on a Lexus here. So they put these latches so the hood wouldn't shake. Would it be the end of the world if you have a little shake on the hood? It's not, but that's, now you have two latches. So that's why they went with this. Let's talk about the interior of the Lexus RX in 2023. This is a complete redesign, and this follows kind of the Lex new Lexus style of interiors. We found that first in the Lexus NX, and now it is in the RX. Gone is the touchpad or the mouse thing that never really worked very well. And welcome to the enormous screen in the middle of the dash that everybody wanted. Well, it's here. With it come some good stuff and some bad stuff. The good stuff is this is a very, very responsive system. It is modern. It works really well. I actually like it. It is very similar to that you'll find in the Tundra, the new Tundra, new Sequoia. It's a similar operating system. Very smooth, very intuitive, has some customizations. It is good. Equally, it has these rotary dials for the HVAC controls that are actually part of the screen, but sectioned off, and you'll see the temperature in the middle, but it's actually all one big screen. They're not separate screens, just the knob sits on top. The not so good stuff, or at least in a way, because we have this enormous screen, now we don't have place for physical buttons. So majority of the HVAC controls are actually in the screen. You no longer can control them just with a button, except the volume, front defrost, rear defrost, and mirror heaters. Those made the cut for a physical button. However, one thing has to be said. When the car is running, your HVC controls are always at the bottom, so you don't have to go through multiple screens to change something. They're always in front of you, so you don't have to do that. That, at least they thought of that. One other thing that is cool, which is not exclusive, but still cool nonetheless, the heated and cooled seats have an actual automatic function to them, which is pretty cool, and it's very readily available. It's always in front of you in the screen, but nonetheless, it's still in the screen. So should anything happen with this screen, well, you only have defrost and rear defrost. That's all you have in the volume. And gone as well is the mechanical shifter. We have what I like to call, and Lexus will not like it when I call it that, a Prius shifter. If you go back to the second generation Prius, it has the exact same shifter, same pattern. Push it to the side and down, you go drive. Push it to the side and up, you go reverse. Push it to the side and hold it, it's neutral. And park is a physical button. And then in this, if you're in drive and then you push it down, you go into manual. That's exactly how a Prius shifter works. That's where it started and that's what I'm gonna call it. It's a Prius shifter. It works. Going back to the Prius, there hasn't been issues, but I just don't see the need for it. 
but that's what they went with. Something else about this interior that is Luxus RX as usual. Very high quality materials, very subtle and classy design. It's not all over the top and in your face. No, it's a subtle, mature design. And this is something you expect in the Lexus RX. This is not, despite Lexus's best attempt, this is not a young car. This is a car for someone that wants to be comfortable. And in that department, it is Lexus RX as usual. Very comfortable seats. Very, very quiet interior, very nice materials. Everything is put together like it should be and business as usual. So if you're upset about the V6 being gone, well, at least this part is not gone and it is actually very well done. I really like the interior. It's one of those interiors that you sit in and you just, you immediately feel calm and comfortable. It is very nice in that department. Now the Lexus RX have a lot of safety tech and it is something Lexus is very proud of. One of those features that caught my attention is the driver monitor. So right on top of the steering wheel, there's actually an infrared camera that is always scanning your face. If you no, kind of not look in the road or you doze off, you fell asleep, it'll actually detect that and it'll start beeping. Initially start beeping a little bit, then loud. But if you continue to be distracted for 13 seconds continuous, it'll actually engage emergency braking, which is good on paper until it happens to you because the camera is not working right or something is obstructing it, then it's a problem. But something else that this camera does is if you're not seated properly, if you seat it too low or the steering wheel is way too high and it only sees half your face, it'll actually also kind of beep at you because it, it wants to tell you you're not seated properly. And that is a little bit over the top. We'll talk about it a little bit down in the video. Something else that is cool and not exclusive, but still nice to see that is very functional. The center console lid actually opens on both sides. I really like that. This is an actual functional thing. And I like to see it here that it retains that. We've seen it across multiple Lexus models and here it is in the RX still. Something that is interesting about this. So this has electronic parking brake as we talked about, but it also has off-road mode. I don't know who would off-road in RX, please don't, but there's a dedicated off-road mode. And then there is a hill descent. Again, I don't know who would use that, but it's right here next to your brake hold and auto start stop off button right in the middle. Let's talk about the back seat. I am 5'7". This is my driving position. I am pretty comfortable here. I have plenty of knee room, plenty of headroom. I like it. It's pretty comfortable back here. Something interesting, you have cooled and heated back seats which is the way it should be. One thing I actually do not like here, which is kind of a sign of cheapness. So the seat is leather, but we have this fake leather piece all across the back of the seat. This is where companies cheap out usually, but we're, we can look at, com at cars that are a lot cheaper than this that have a full on leather seat. This one does not, which is, I guess is not the end of the world, but would have loved to see a full leather seat. Look at the back hatch, which is of course power operated, also has like that useless kick sensor. First cool thing, you have two buttons. One of them closes the back door and one of them closes and locks it. This is very cool and useful. Now the Lexus RX does not have a third row seat. Again, we're not surprised by that, but you do have power folding second row seats you can fold them from here and fold them back so both ways not just one way but something that only specific people and majority of them are my viewers will really appreciate see this is a car that's been modernized and all these gizmos and safety tech but there's one thing that is very very nice would you look at that spare tire they did not get rid of it Good job, Lexus, because so many cars are ditching spare tires. Not the Lexus RX, not the 2023 model. Very nice. I, I hope this continues, folks, because yes, there are people who don't see the need of a spare tire. Most people, though, that don't have a voice, they do want the spare tire because you don't want to find yourself in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire and basically that's it. You're done. You have no other option. 
In the RX though, you have a spare tire, so you're good to go after changing it. Let's talk about some things that I do not like about the 2023 Lexus RX. While I admire their attempt to make this car a safer car, and it has all these safety gizmos and systems and whatnot, while they are great for a distracted and not focused driver, but when you are a focused and not distracted driver, they are very, very annoying. And you find yourself always have a tendency of wanting to shut them all off, and at that point, why did you pay for them? They come standard with the car. This is the problem. It is constantly beeping at you for something or another. You move your hand over the driver monitor, it beeps. You're stopped waiting for traffic to pass so you can go, it starts beeping as soon as you move your foot off the, off the brake pedal because it thinks you're gonna jump in traffic. You're trying to make a turn. It starts beeping because there's a, a car that is seven miles away and it sees it, it starts beeping at you. It's constantly beeping, 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 and you end up getting very annoyed and shut them all off. The systems that throws the price of this car to what it is. I don't know what they were going with that. They could have been a little bit less conservative for those that drive normal, but that's what they went with. And the other thing, which is perhaps the biggest elephant in the room, and the reason you watch this video, the four-cylinder engine. This is the first Lexus RX with a four-cylinder engine, ever since the RX 300 came out back in the late 90s. It just doesn't fit. I tried really hard. I truly admire the technology in this engine, and I really like what they did with it, but it just doesn't fit this car. This is a car for nice people. It is not meant to be fast, not meant to move your emotions, not meant to do all that, despite Lexus's best attempt. This is a car for nice people that want to have a nice car, nice and quiet interior, and durable and long-lasting. Well, that fourth cylinder, the minute you punch it, it's just going to start screaming, and it's very loud and buzzy because it is a four-cylinder. The V6, regard, the V6 was never powerful, by the way. It was always smooth, quiet, and just warm. The way a V6 moves a car like this is different than even a more powerful four-cylinder. The four-cylinder would just be labored, buzzy, loud, and just doesn't match the character of the RX, which this particular RX, very quiet, very nice interior, super smooth, over bumps and over driving, but then you got the shouty four-cylinder. It just doesn't fit the character. And then possibly the biggest thing, again, going back with the safety and the technology, I really don't like the e-latch system. It looks great on paper. It'll make the typical car reviewers and journalists jump from joy. Look at this cool technology. It does not work in the real world. And yes, the whole point of it is safety, so you wouldn't open it. But now you're going to rely on the car to be your eyes and add to the price of the car because of that? I just don't like it. Too much had to happen for the system. And I want to see the first time this freezes the whole car freezes from rain and ice and whatnot, how are you gonna open the door? Before you used to have a mechanical handle, now you have an actuator, you only have a few seconds to open the door once you press the button. Now what? See, this is the problem when we start having safety features that interfere with the functionality of the basic functionality of a car. I don't like this e-light system. And the last but not least is the touchpad. Everybody disliked the touchpad, even though it did work. It was not great though. We got rid of it, finally, but we have a worse problem than the touchpad. The situation with the steering wheel controls. I don't know who woke up one day and decided we have too many buttons on the steering wheel. We should re lower the number of, nobody cares about this stuff. If they would have put the same steering wheel from the outgoing model in this, nobody would have said a thing because it worked, it had all the buttons you need, and it worked great. Here, we have the world's most annoying heads-up display thing, where you, the buttons are not labeled on the steering wheel, you have to put your hand on it to know what it does, because it's gonna show you in the 
heads-up display, then you press it. And sometimes it doesn't work. And now one more thing to distract us from the road. No wonder why we have all these safety systems, because we're going to be distracted with the heads-up display and what it's doing and where, what this button does on the stage. This is, this is just counterproductive. You made all these safety systems, and then you put the biggest distraction there is, buttons on the steering wheel that show you what they are in the heads-up display. Absolutely makes no sense. I'll take the trackpad over this new system that pretty soon we're going to be in every single Lexus. What are my final thoughts on the 2023 Lexus RX? We're going to need to sit down on this one and have a talk. Here's the thing. Everything that was bad about the previous Lexus RX is fixed here. But everything that was good about it has been in one way, shape or form changed sometimes to the same worse most of the time. See, this is a super quiet car that is not meant to excite your emotions. This is a car for nice people who want a quiet car that will last a very long time. It will be the same at, 10, at one year old, the same at 15 year old. That's why people buy the RX. Not because of its technology, not because it's a fast, exciting, good looking, la la la. Nobody cares about that from the Lexus buyers. But yet, I see a lot of things that are counterproductive. You have a very, very quiet interior. I mean, you honk the horn, you can barely hear it. But then we have a buzzy four cylinder engine. And then you have this super quiet interior, but then you have the constant beeping from the safety systems for anything, or the tiniest thing, it'll constantly be beeping. What was the point of making this car quiet if the engine and the beeping is gonna make it all go away? And then come the reliability. I am not concerned about the four cylinder engine reliability, but I am concerned about all these gizmos. There's just simply too much that people are gonna end up turning off. Typical RX buyers will end up be annoying by, annoyed by, shut it off, and unfortunately, they already paid for all these options. Honestly, I like the Lexus RX, but I don't think they've, they've done their people justice. If you are a previous RX owner and you want to upgrade, you're gonna have some concerns. If you are going into an RX for the first time, perhaps it won't be a big of an issue, the engine, you'll get used to it, it'll be fine. But if you're going from a previous RX, I do have some concerns. This is a perfect RX, except that engine. Not because it's a bad engine, it's just a four cylinder that buzzes and it's way too loud and it kind of robs from its character. That's the God honest truth, folks. And this was very difficult. I really like this car. I really like the way it looks. It has so much of that kind of known RX DNA of this is a nice people car. But then it has this modernness that just too much in your face that completely doesn't, doesn't fit its character. I don't know. This RX is a little confused. I hope Lexus does a little better and know their audience better in the future. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.